So hello, everyone. I'm so happy to be back here teaching for the US Chess School. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember me because I wasn't here for like, I don't know, almost a year or something. But anyone remembers me? Just asking. Oh, Rio remembers. Awesome. So if one person remembers it, that's, that's good enough. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so I, oh, thank you. So I'm just getting messages. Thank you for uh, about the US champs. And that's actually the topic I thought about uh, discussing today. And that is the US uh, women's championships that I played. So I didn't play the US championships for like four, three, four years. I think I played last 2016 or 2017. So it was kind of a big return for me to, you know, active play and to play like one of the strongest, not one of the, but the strongest women in the United States. And, uh, okay, I actually just need to change the name here. And uh, what I wanted to talk about is to walk you through my games. Some of them depends how many uh, we will be able to, to cover and to talk about decision-making because, you know, in games, we make a lot of decisions. We make decisions when we are like deciding obviously which move to make, that's one decision, but we make a lot of decision on every single move, like which move candidates we consider, which variation we, uh, we calculate, how far we calculate those variations. So game requires a lot of decision-making and with this class, you will be able to kind of check the accuracy of your decision-making and compare it to my decision-making during the US championships. Now, one last thing before we go into the games is that, uh, you know, decision making is about making first good decision, but second, what? I'm gonna give you time to think. What else is important about decision, make, decision making? Obviously one is to make actually good decision, but what is the second part? That's also very important. Okay. So one of the responses I am uh, I have is following it, following up with your decision. So when you make the decision, uh, let's say uh, let's say you go uh, let's say you decide for one line and like you play the first move, you also want maybe to follow with the second move. Uh, but there are there is something else, something else important about decision making. Yeah, very good, very good. Uh, how much time you spend? So if you make good decisions in your games. Uh, but you take too much time on those decisions, you're gonna suffer at the end of the at the end of the game because you just will not have enough time to make decisions, and then most likely you're gonna just blunder or just be very inaccurate. So those two things I want you to remember. First thing is to make you know good decision, and secondly to make them in time. So when you are practicing, whether it's tactics or playing games, you want to make sure that you always like um, are very. Uh, focus on making decisions, but not also spending too much time. And I'm going to tell you right now that the second part of making fast de decisions was not, not great from my perspective for the US championships. I have to improve on that. Um, okay, so let's go. I want to start with game number one that I played against Anna Zatonsky, uh, and then we will just move from there. So I decided to play d4. I tend to be e4 player. I tend to play e4 most of the time, or I am a London player. So if I don't play e4 and I play d4, it's gonna be London. So that's what I decided to play for that game. So here we have typical London. Now the main man is here bishop g3, but I decided to go with this kind of new move, knight e5, that allows, first of all, not the, doesn't allow the trade immediately or on g3 uh, and saves, uh, saves some tempos. And we're gonna see what followed up. So Anna castled, developing the knight, c5. This is a very normal structure. We all know that for, oops, that was not planned, for London. Um, and then you usually want to play the bishop d3. But since the knight now is here on e5, you may then later kind of decide what you want to do with it. Okay, Anna played b6. Um, what do you think is the idea behind b6? What does black want to do here? Yep, very good job, Sefer and Aradaya. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Um, is to play bishop a6. So that's why, uh, oh, I can call you Adi. Okay, I'm gonna do that. It's much easier. That's why maybe playing bishop d3 here can be met immediately by, uh, by bishop a6. 
So that's why I decided to, uh, to wait with it. And I played h4. So I'm immediately launching an attack. And I'm waiting for this bishop a6 to happen because probably that's what black wants to do. Uh, and there is no reason for me to waste the tempo with the bishop. So sometimes you want to kind of anticipate what your opponent wants to do. So you save time. Queen c7. I'm continuing with my plan. Knight c6. And now, uh, this is your first time of making decisions. You see the, there are three attackers on this knight. So you cannot just simply develop your bishop maybe like this or there because you would lose a piece. So my question is, how are you gonna continue here? And try to give me like a variation, not because I want you to, uh, not like five moves or something, but uh, I want you I want you to give me an idea of how you're going to continue, like what's what's really your your idea. So I think this was the first time that I spent like more time in the game. This was my first, I think, decision kind of making moment. Okay, so I have first suggestions, knight f3 to kind of enforce the knight on e5. Second suggestion is the same to play knight df3, but also with the idea to maybe play rook g1 and g4. Interesting. With rook g1, we only have to be careful about like uh, maybe this knight capturing this pawn, but obviously you can you can plan for it. Okay, so rook d3, knight df3. What are other move candidates besides knight df3? Okay, g4 immediately. You guys are very. Uh, <laughs> very aggressive. So you're like, I don't, you don't care that you're going to lose a pawn. You just want to go after me. Let me see. I'm going to capture, capture. So what are you going to do now? Queen f3, or what is your calculation? Because I feel like if you take and you allow me the queen to be here, that could be... Like you have to have pieces also to attack my king. Okay, people are like maybe starting with queen f3. Okay, so Adi is saying takes, takes. Now queen f3 takes. Oh, wow. Um, I mean, okay, it's interesting. I'm gonna give you that. But all right, I'm gonna like bishop b7. And then maybe just there, not that too much. And on this diagonal, I mean, it's something to consider. I, I give you that. It's interesting to consider, but you know, it's much easier to give, give up a pawn when we are analyzing than when you are playing the first round uh, at the US Women's Championships. But okay, definitely something to consider. Any other decisions here that we can do? I'm looking. I remember last time I was like everybody throwing lines in chat. And now I have a little less. Because no one is even suggesting what I made in the game. Okay, I have knight D. Okay, all of you want to play knight DF3. Some of you are suggesting, okay, another idea is with this knight. But if you go with this knight, and I take, you have to calculate this. Now you cannot really capture with pawn because then this pawn is not protected enough. And if you capture with knight, then I'm just gonna go after you. Like remember your pieces as white are not that fantastic. All right guys, what's happening in the chat? Please let's, let's just focus on the game. All right, no one is suggesting my move, which I think is actually pretty good. So what I decided in the game was that I think this bishop is really bad and I want to keep that bishop that bad. So I decided to capture on c6, queen takes. Now computer says that, you know, probably queen f3 is now very good, but I didn't want to do that. I took the bishop as well and played f4. 
And I really like these two pawns because I'm stopping black from playing any e5. Black cannot play any bishop a6 right now. So this bishop is not very good. So that's what happened. Opponent played a5 because they really want to, I guess, block the bishop. I mean, trade the bishop. I played here. You know, every time opponent plays an a5, we don't necessarily have to like be like scared and stop it. Remember, white is focusing on the king here. So if black is continuing on the queen side, I'm fine. I want to weaken maybe the dark squares, maybe go h6, maybe do something with the queen and uh, rook there. So I just played queen f3. Bishop here. Now I capture, capture. And okay, this is, I think the second and last moment of the game that I want you to think how to continue here. What to do here for white? Because I think this was the second critical moment for me. Because obviously the king is in the center, so you can decide to castle either way or not at all. You can also think about pushing with some of the pawns, with capturing, a lot of, lot of options. So I want you to take like one or two minutes now and suggest move candidates. I think one thing that you maybe remember from me is I'm a big fan of move candidates. I think it's very important to be looking for options instead of like having a tunnel vision where you like, you pick a move, you like it, you calculate it, but already with the intention of playing it. So I want you to kind of, you know, uh, be wide open to other possibilities and think about at least three moves. So all of you, I see how many people do we have here? At least like 50, probably more. Um, so if you can write MC and then three moves that you suggest. And then after that, I will give you a little bit more time to pick your winner. To pick move candidates. Okay, some of you suggest even four move candidates. I like it, good job. So I have candidates from Roger, Adi, Kelsey, Ryo, Seppert, Owen. But some of you are suggesting only one move. Okay, so I'm going to tell you what are the move candidates. G4, Long Castle, Queen H3, H6, E4, King F2, and I think those are A4. Yeah, I feel those are all the moves that you suggested so far. So that's a lot of move candidates. So now pick one. And by the way, anyone wants to grab a mic and tell us your decision that you would make here and why? If yes, just raise your hand. Okay, I'm changing the chat settings so you guys can only write with us so we don't have any spamming of unnecessary information. Okay, no one is raising hand. I know this is a little maybe challenging position. Any suggestions what to play here? All right, I see people what they like. Okay, if you want a mic, you have to raise your hand because I don't want to like randomly just uh, call on people. Maybe they don't want to talk. Oh, we have also knight f1 candidate with knight h2, knight g4. Okay, so all these options seems kind of nice. Uh, I think this position is very flexible for white. Rook h3, rook g3, lift. Okay. Okay, Ryo is raising hand. Okay, sure. Ryo, I'm giving, you can unmute yourself and tell us what would you play here? Yeah, usually we do x climb these days, but okay. Um, uh -huh, so yeah, I forgot about that. That's true. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, I want to play, I mean, I want to first get my king safe with long castles. As I don't think he, he's going to come that quickly. He needs c4, b5, b4, and then take on c3, which is four moves, and then we can do something at that time. Plus, <laughs> we can respond um, with king b1. And it, 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 generally, it's not that strong. So, like, long castles? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so let's say b long castle. Mm -hmm. um, what would you play? Like, c4, maybe? C4, what if I take? 
uh, e I would play e takes d4 here. Mm -hmm. And then and like b5. Yeah, b5 makes sense. Mm -hmm. G4. Yeah, you're not you're not at all scary, scared here of some you think you're fast too on the king side. Mm. Beef. So, beef before four. G5, G5. Uh -huh. My okay, it's getting complicated. I guess I like jumping here is just giving up a pawn. Uh, so either I can take or move the. So if I move the knight, yeah, okay, it's getting complicated. Sometimes you can maybe just move the king and wait, right? Oh, plus three. Or maybe some just okay. Castle, castle is a possibility. Thank you for for your opinion, Ryo. Uh, I was considering castle. I, I I do admit I was considering castle because it's very uncomfortable to keep the king here. But I just wasn't sure that I I like the position like where Bly goes after me here, and I just have to hope that I'm like fast and out there. So what I decided in the game was I played first eight six move that many of you considered here. And after h6, I'm kind of forcing the weakening of dark squares. And then I played this move, e4, that some of you also put as a, um, as a candidate move. Because now if black takes, we take, take, takes. And now look at the, like this rook is totally out of the play. This pawn is incredibly, Um, and if pawn takes, can you guys hear me? I can hear you. Okay, awesome. My computer is saying like disconnecting, reconnecting. Okay, so now we have rook d1 or castle, and we have actually very good, uh, very good end game. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Uh, so what happened in the game after e4? Uh, Anna decided to play queen e7, and I played e5. And I felt like I have really nice pawn structure. I have four connect. <laughs> and also, like, this pawn can be very good, again, because it's guarding the, the g7. And after she moved, I castle. And the game continue was uh, very interesting, but... Um, I don't know. I think we're going to skip to next game, because I just wanted you to consider like some of these moves, uh, some of the decision-making to get. I think this position is very comfortable now for white because of the pawn structure, because like all the pieces look look fine. We can try to, you know, play g4, f5 if we want to. We can also try to play c4 if we get the time. Um, and overall, just this position is good. Okay, so let's move on to next game. I'm going to flip the board here because this game I played against um, Sabina Foyser. I was black. Play this opening. I'm just going to quickly get to the position that I want to show you. Yeah, by the way, this is not the best way to play. I think here, I think here is the best to play, if I'm not mistaken, immediately e5. But I didn't know that at the moment. Oh, no, here. Sorry, here is the best to play e5. But I think I didn't know that at the moment. So I play this. All right. Uh, I think I played one more move here. Let me just make sure I'm not going to ruin it. Yeah, one more move. Here, here. Now, black to move. Now, when we look at this position, it's clear that white is, white is doing pretty well. The bishops are nice on these diagonals. This, these two pawns in the center are pretty nice too. Rook can go to, okay, I need to get rid of all that now. 
this rook is also ready to maybe go to e1. And black, I mean, and white will decide when to play d5 or when to play c5. Uh, or whether to like maybe reshuffle these two pieces to have queen first and then try for some, you know, checkmates with knight e5 and whatever. So this position is not that comfortable for black at the moment. It's not like lost or anything, it's just not comfortable. So now you're black and you have to figure out like, what are you gonna do? Do you have any interesting continuation mm, that maybe it's not just gonna, you know, wait for, for white to like develop all the pieces and improve? So what to do here with black? Okay. Oh, Sefer plays this a lot for black. So maybe, maybe for some it's uh, it's comfortable. Black has some options as well, right? These bishops are also looking at that diagonal. Maybe we can play c5 sometimes, but we have to be careful about d5 happening. And we cannot really play e5 at any moment because there are just too many attackers. So Adi thinks trying to break, break with c5, okay? But if you play c5 right now, aren't you worried I'm gonna play actually d5? Because then I'm opening this bishop, oops, not there, but here. Well, if you, okay, people are like, I'm fine with d5, you're gonna take, but if you take and, uh, okay, I can take on f6 or I can take on d5. Now the question is what to do. So let's say I take on d5. And if you take, how are you gonna take next? I mean, if you are gonna take just like with the bishop, like, okay, you don't care. Oh, you actually care here. Yeah, right, because now it's the bishop takes and then the bishop takes and you may actually lose this guy. So, And if you take with um, if you take with knight, bishop takes king here. Probably like like even like rook f one happening and stuff. Rook f e one. I think this is very dangerous for black. Like this knight is guarding these squares for the queen. This bishop is here. Like white pieces are just very, very active. Okay, I want, I want you to find something different. So I really like the move I played here. Okay, h6, prophylaxis. I was considering h6. Um, yeah or g6, both of those moves. I feel like playing g6 is just like really weakening this diagonal. And although nothing is happening there right now, it just, it just for me, it didn't feel, feel great. Um, so, and h6, I was like, it's not necessary right now. So I, I don't want to commit to h6 and to weakening this diagonal if I don't have to right now. So I was considering, but yes, I was considering g6, h6, something like normal, like rook aca, just to finish development. But then I decided to play something else. Okay, Carlos, yeah. So Carlos is suggesting bishop b4. And that was the move that I did not play, but I first considered it. And I thought it's a really nice move uh, because I am stopping the rook e1. So I am at least having this bishop kind of active. And whenever I play like maybe c5 and stuff, um, also the d5 may not be that threatening because this rook is, you know, ready to help out with recapturing and defending everything. And now when I was looking at this bishop before, I realized that anytime I play like c5, I may be worried about a3 happening. 
And then the bishop is forced to go there. And like, I don't know how I feel about the bishop being stuck on a5. So that led me to play something else. What? What did I play instead of bishop b4? Yes, exactly, Carlos. I played first bishop a3. So I'm very happy if these two bishops are traded because if we trade these bishops, uh, you know, there's really nothing on this diagonal happening and I can play c5 anytime I want and I feel totally safe, totally safe. I think it's, you know, it's gonna be equal pretty soon. If white is gonna play something like bishop c3, then I'm gonna move back. And you know what? I'm totally fine making a draw by repetition. At the US championships, it was not allowed to offer draw whatsoever, not after move 30, not after move 40, ever. Uh, but you can draw by making, you can make a draw by, uh, you know, repeating moves. So I was definitely planning on repeating because I really wish to trade these bishops. Uh, but Sabina, after my bishop a3, she played bishop a1. And after bishop a1, I went the bishop b4 that we wanted in the first place to play to guard the e1, but I'm not really allowing to play a3 because the bishop is now on a1, not ready to support that pawn. So I don't know if you are as impressed as I was with this, um, with this finding, but I was very happy to have this bishop active on, um, I need to get rid of the highlighted squares, uh, on the b4 and you know guarding this square. So I wasn't sure how white is going to continue, but I knew that c5 is not available, b5 is not available, uh, rook e1 is not available. Um, so I'm just like restricting white's options. White played queen e2, and I went a5. You know, thinking maybe about a4, uh, getting some space there. And white responded with a4, which is actually not a good move. White loses pretty much all advantage after a a4 move. I think the best move is something like bishop c2 to retreat and you know to think about maybe reshuffling with the queen and doing something else. But yeah, yeah, exactly, Austin. After a4, the bishop is just you know too strong and the b4 square is extremely weak. No one can get rid of this bishop, and this bishop is gonna guard this square for forever. And that actually what happened. I will just sh slowly show you. What happened? I kicked the knight when it was necessary. Played important move f5. Kind of moved around. Attacked now here. And then played c5. And suddenly black is doing uh, black is doing pretty uh, pretty well. Okay, so that's all I want to to kind of wait. White could have played obviously something better, but you know, the important part is to understand when you are playing chess and when you are playing black, uh, you know, in many positions, you are just worse, slightly worse out of the opening. But instead of just like being worse and getting even worse, you want to think about some active options, some options that, you know, restrict opponents pieces and just maybe, you know, go for, uh, for some equality. And, you know, sometimes, I think when I was younger, like I just want to move back for a second. I would be worried about like, you know, making repetitions because I would feel like, you know, if you make repetitions, like you are weak, you're not playing for win and uh, you shouldn't do that. But it's important to also know that if you are worse, like making a draw is totally fine. And, you know, being worried about making a draw then can lead to making actually worse decisions. Okay, I have a question. Is it possible for black to play for an advantage in the opening? Uh, yes. So actually, if you follow the game that Sabina played in the last round against uh, Ashrita Esferan, Ashrita played the same opening as I did, only improved by uh, somewhere, I think here, if I'm not mistaken, I think here playing e5. I hope I'm not mistaken. I think, okay, let me double check just so I'm not feeding you some nonsense. I'm gonna double check the game. Yeah, exactly, playing e5 right now here. 
this is a very good move because if you, uh, I want to play e4 and have active pieces. And if you go for like, you know, like some captures, I think that's what happened or capture, something like that happened in bishop e2. First, the captures there. Um, maybe you're not playing for an advantage, but like black is doing much, much better compared to the position that, that I had. So I didn't know the theory before, but now I know that playing e5 here instead of my queen e7 and slow b6 is, uh, is very good. Okay, Let mo let's move on to next game because I want to show you uh, this game. So my game with Ashrida, it was in under London, I wonder. Oh yeah, I will, sorry, I will let them in. I need to figure out how to do that. Mm. Wait, how do I put them in? I don't see them in the waiting room anymore, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, okay, they're in. All right. Uh, how many? How much time do we have? Okay, let's move on to. Okay, move 19. Okay, so let's see this game with Ashrita. Just again, one, let's flip the board. I was white. That was another London. And B6 is not that popular move, but it's a, you know, interesting, surprising move. I played again knight D2. You realize that, you know, I'm, if they want to play bishop A6, I just want to wait uh, with my bishop on F1. Bishop B7. Okay, I'm gonna move a little quickly here just to get to the position I had. I get this pair of bishop. Not pair of bishop, but bishop against knight. This is what happened. Okay, here we go. This is another position, another, I think, critical moment to figure out how to, how to continue here. Yep, so what to do here? We are white. See, again, we have the typical London kind of structure. This time we have Nice bishop compared to this knight that's kind of out. Yeah, I don't know why they didn't move with the knight. I agree that maybe leaving the knight on a6 was not that a great choice, but okay. Oh, sorry, I said bad bishop. I meant good bishop. Good bishop, bad knight. If I said bad bishop, I didn't mean it. Okay, so we are getting some ideas with h6 or e4 or f4 or queen g4 first. So what it is that you would play at the end. Okay, queen g4, f4 and f5. Adi is suggesting. Mm -hmm. Anybody else having different? Maybe a4 and rook a1. Okay, maybe a. Okay, so we kind of have to decide do we want to play on the queen side or do we want to play on the king side? I think that's or in the center. I think that's actually an important decision. So what do you, what most of you want to do? It's kind of funny. I just turn on engine for a second and uh, engine is kind of very happy with all, those are like first three engine suggestions and both, you know, both are, all three are like very, very good for white. So it's sometimes it's really like you have, you can have equal decisions. Uh, you just have to decide which one you want to make. Um, 
and just you know not spend your entire life on actually deciding. Okay, so Adi wants to play e4, d takes e4, queen takes, mm -hmm. and just like being happy with this. But what if uh, what if after like something like this, this, this? I'm wondering if I can go in my knight c5 to activate the knight finally. But maybe I want to play something like rook d5, just to be happy the rook can be activated. I still think white is an advantage, but um, not entirely sure how to continue here. I maybe do like, you know, maybe just jumping knight c5, knight d3 could be, could be just safer, just to get the knight, you know, out of this horrible square on a6 to this pretty neat d3. So what I decided in the game was I played a6. Obviously you can take this pawn any anytime you want, because like, if you take it, you weaken all these dark squares and that's just gonna be a disaster with my bishop here. Like, you should never worry about, uh, sorry, you should never worry about like g takes h6. That's just like, if your opponent does that, you should just say like, thank you. And, you know, <laughs> and kind of move on. Um, yeah, because maybe going like here with next bishop f4. And if queen g5, we, maybe you can play like queen h2, just still planning the same thing. And then maybe there, king there, rook there, like you, you have enough, enough pressure to put on h6. These rooks and the and the knight can never, never go and defend. Okay, so I played h6. My opponent played g6 very quickly. And I decided to play e4 now. And I was quite happy about this move. Um, and I didn't mind my opponent going after this, this pawn. But surprisingly, computer would be much happier if I just didn't allow the pawn to be captured and just went queen g4 and just you know kind of targeted the dark squares immediately, which kind of now makes sense. But in the game, I felt I'm going to have enough compensation. So look what happened in the game. I played e4. My opponent went queen g5, and I play e5. How do you guys feel, and girls, about e5? Good, bad, OK? What do you think? Alex is like, OK. <laughs> but if you had to pick a side, is it good or is it bad? OK, OK, but not needed. Okay, mm -hmm. so what do you do? Do you push, do you capture, do you play something completely else? So tell me. It takes D1, it takes D5. Sorry, it takes, unbelievable. E takes d5, so rook takes d5, and the rook e1. Okay. Separate goes a4, wants to go? Okay. I mean, I think a4 could be very often just plugged there because, again, you don't mind if it's captured, you can go and capture it back. Well, there's one thing I kind of underestimated. I'm going to tell you, I was considering tanking on d5. And if black recaptures with pawn, then OK, I'm. this is going to be horrible. I'm so happy about my position. Yeah, I can play rook e1, then totally fine. But I wasn't sure if rook captures. Because when rook captures, the queen threatens to take it. And then this rook can always defend on you know h5. So suddenly I wasn't sure how much counterattack I'm gonna have. Kind of surprisingly, at least for me, what I missed or just didn't understand in the game, that queen e3 is a strong move. 
I analyzed it later with computer and surprisingly queen e3 is very strong because if you if you move the queen somewhere back then I'm happy I'm still you know defending the pawn I can maybe move my bishop here and just continue on the dark squares and if you capture I capture and you're just gonna always have trouble on uh, either back rank you're gonna have back rank issues or I'm gonna put a lot of pressure on you know a file or as many of you suggested I'm gonna maybe play something with a4 and go for some pressure so this position is pretty good for white and in the game I wasn't sure about this if you go rook h5 so if you go rook h5 here um what am I going to do? I'm going to rook d f2 or, or bishop f4. I think I can do both. So I'm going to go maybe rook d f2. Yeah, Alex wants to play rook d f2. Okay, I want to play f5. Okay, but you have to be a little careful. Like maybe I... Yeah, Austin, yeah, I'm getting the the same vibe about maybe playing e4. Maybe playing e4 here. I agree with the chat. Okay, Brian is like, okay, e4, you take. Okay. So you are just like, you are her pawn up, very happy about it, okay. Alex wants to play bishop f4, I like that too. Where are you going to go with the rook now? Rook h5. Okay. I think we take. No, maybe we don't take actually. Rook h5, we don't take. Yeah, yeah. Well, sorry, I thought you play maybe rook h4. Rook h5. Uh, well, if you, okay, one second. If you capture this way, you still have to be careful about this file. I don't think black is. I don't think saying black has no problem is accurate because I think this knight is going to create some problems because you cannot really play with it. Uh, and okay, this look is this rook can be a little trapped. And the more you push the pawns, the weaker they can get. So I would be like white can just want to go to the e file. That's one option. Second option is just not to give up that pawn. But I feel like uh, this is just, you know, this is, I think, pretty, pretty good for uh, for white. Oh, how, how you guys are just like, no, we prefer it for black. <laughs> okay. So, so you are saying what? So if I go, what was my, okay, bishop f4 here. You're gonna play g5. And you're not worried that if I, oh, g4, but then rook h4. How is that? Yeah, no, I, you know, maybe, maybe we can play g4 here. But, if I just go here, I give you the pawn. Sure, take it. And then I go here. Like you have just trouble defending this guy. And if you play like f5, uh, I'm thinking about playing like either g4 or e4. I don't know if I know what's the difference. Either g4 or e4, but I feel like I want to keep this pawn here. But maybe both are the same. It's just this bishop is amazing. Like look at that diagonal again compared to this knight. Yeah. No. Okay, guys, you can if you want to, you can, you know, uh, analyze it later. I will, you know, you all the games are all, all obviously available. 
but in the game, I just didn't understand that, you know, this, this end game uh, after rook take, I mean, pawn take, rook takes, queen e3 is so good. I just didn't get it. But now all of us should get it that this is just like really strong and this bishop is pretty amazing. And we always want to double. And with e4, either open the e-file or, um, or just get even more space. The problem is that, you know, it's going to be so, so crunched for black and black will have issues. Okay. Let's move back. So what did I play? I, I pushed the e5 here. Was there anything else I wanted to show? Yeah, OK, there was one moment. That's here. What to do now here for white? Last moment in this game. Yep, As Austin is like, queen e3 exclaim. Exactly, queen e3 exclaim. We have amazing pawn structure. Dark squares are super weak. Um, if the queen takes, it's gonna be even more pressure on this. The knight can never like block it because this pawn is there. Yeah, you guys would play better than I did. Uh, but again, in the game, I just didn't recognize that, didn't recognize how the pawn structure is strong. And I was just thinking about attacking. So what I did was I played rook dd1 first. She took the pawn and I was fine, you take the pawn. And I played f3 with the idea that I want to, you know, put my king here, get the rook there, maybe bishop on the dark squares. And I thought I'm just going to checkmate. Like I was pretty confident about this position. But she played a very good move. King f8 to run away. I continued with my plan. And then queen here, here, and now. OK, I'm going to now, only one move. I'm going to uh, have you guess my opponent's move. What's the best one here? Because this is the key move you have to play for black. Otherwise, otherwise you're probably toast. <laughs> So maybe you have two moves now when I'm saying. Seeing that. Okay, Austin and Alex are like G5 immediately. Um, I think there's a second move. Yep. Eric, Eric is H6. H6 is what happened in the game. Because you want to be ready that after any of these jokes, you have G5 to really not allow the bishop to get to this square and not attack. But what I see that, you know, Eric and I mean, Austin and Alex, what they suggested, I think g5 is the same thing. Yep. You just stop the bishop from going to that dark square diagonal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree, Austin. I was, that was my plan. I immediately wanted to get the bishop there to control, obviously, the dark squares or this way. I, I probably didn't care which way to go. But after h6, or g5 could have happened as well, but h6 happened in the game. I realized that it's not going to be not going to be that simple. And I went to, you know, still attack, but now g5 happened, so it's probably just move order. I went to double up the rooks. But, you know, no break here. But it's just not working. This is what happened. I got the pawn back. But after this very strong move. Okay, last decision for black. What are you going to play after, after bishop h4? If you are black. OK, so wait. Queen d8 is probably mouse slip. Queen d8, no, 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 don't do that. Uh, <laughs> but probably queen, uh, yeah, exactly. Queen e8 is an option. King c6, I don't know why people why we give it to exclaims, but king c6 is definitely an option as well. Uh, all of you are suggesting only these two moves. Mm, Kelsey, yep, that's what happened. So uh, Ashrita, she played queen h7, and I think this is a very strong move. Probably, you know, the same thing. You can play king c, I don't like queen e8. I feel like this is a little too passive, although black is probably still fine. But I feel like 
it's passive and why to be passive when you don't have to be. Um, king c6 is a nice prophylactic move. And then, you know, allowing the king to, queen to be active. But queen, is, queen h7 is like immediately, like black is saying like, I don't care if you give check here or there, I'm just gonna hide my king and then go after you and try to, you know, either capture the pawns or just make perpetual. And in this situation, I realized that, you know what? I don't think white is better here anymore because this bishop, yeah, it's great that uh, the bishop is gonna cover all the dark squares, but uh, okay, you, you are not gonna check me just on the dark squares. And while having this king really weak, I was thinking that, you know, if at any moment this knight gets somehow active, it could be a problem for me. Well, f7 pawn is maybe useless, uh, but what, this pawn is not gonna promote either if there is f7 pawn. So that's why I just gave a check, move here, another check when here okay i'm like threatening checkmate or obviously like if you move the knight you're going to be in trouble but now black simply goes for like perpetual and there was really nothing i could have done so to wrap this game up when we go a little bit back a little quickly uh it's clear that you know my attack of like giving up this pawn uh, and just like maybe, you know, going on the H file was very ambitious, but maybe a little naive. And it was just better to play more strategically, to just go, you know, trade the queens and just enjoy uh, space, all these dark squares, um, and just better position. So that's that's what I learned from this this game, kind of. That, yeah, thinking about attacking is good but just having like a nice position, like just this, this, maybe it's not bad either. Okay, one last thing, I know we are about to end, but I did want to show you one last game that I played, uh, like super interesting end game that I played with uh, Nazi Paikidze. So let me just get the notation here. So we skip to, okay. I'm gonna now get rid of the notation. So I got this position. Mm, I'm just gonna give you time to kind of navigate what's happening here. I have a problem on this. Square a6, the bishop is attacking, the rook is attacking, this rook is ready to join the attack, you know, either on c1 or a1. Uh, I don't have my king castle. So obviously white is better here. No question asked, white is totally better. Um, so what to do here? And I got this kind of neat idea, a5. So a5 is an option, but it also gives up this square, right? So if like the, if we play a5, a5, king, b7, okay. So if you play king, let me see. If you play there, And I mean, even if I just go like this way and then want to go here and capture and get one for free. Or even maybe not even for bishop, maybe I can try to like trade this way, the knights and then take the bishop for free. I got a cool idea and that was rook a6, okay, so a5 here. So what do you play after my rook ad1? I'm totally going to give you time. Rook b8 here. Mm, that's not expected. Okay, I continue with my thing, bishop b5. King e7. Okay, I go still with my knight d4. Mm. 
knight takes d4, king takes d4. No, but bishop takes c the problem is okay. Uh I know you may be very happy here, but I'm just gonna take this pawn. And you know, I'm gonna force check and the king on the back rank because now you have to move the bishop somewhere. So are you still happy with this? Oh, maybe bishop b7 back. Okay, maybe here if you go back, bishop b7. Okay, I agree, wait, wait. Uh, so let me capture with rook. This is just not comfortable, like. Well, if you play rook d8, uh, I can just take and take. Yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe a5 is fine. It's definitely something we can consider, uh, but I was ready to have some counter attack. And I played what someone here suggested too. Not sure who was it because there are so many messages I get lost. Okay, knight b8 is just very ugly. It's possible, like if there's nothing to do, but it looks like super ugly. So I wanted to be active. So I played h6. And my idea was that, you know, if they capture, I can capture with rook and I'm at least targeting this square. So this knight is slightly tied to that pawn uh, if the rook moves something somewhere. And I can also at some moment play maybe something like rook here and then create some pins. You know, just some ideas. And if black plays, e if white plays e5, I can actually take. There is this immediately. So I thought h6 is a kind of cool, cool idea. Now, Nazi decided to play rook c1. And now there is this like sneaky idea of capturing here and capturing there. What did I do here? Just now we need to be careful. Obviously, obviously I calculated this before I played h6. King d7, okay. King d7. Hmm, it looks solid. It's not what I had in mind, but... Yeah, okay, king d7 is possible. I don't see any tactics why it wouldn't work. But I had a different idea. Yep, exactly how separate thought. I took pawn takes. And after this, I take. And now it looks like I'm I'm lost, right? Because this bishop is attacked and there are some tricks with, like if you go here, can I trap the bishop? No, maybe I cannot trap the bishop. I thought maybe we can get to this square, but, but okay, well, this is not a position, you know, that obviously I want to have where this pawn can be rolling. Or rook, but after rook a7, there's still, still this but okay this is uncomfortable probably something happening but i had a different thing in mind and that is that after takes takes here i played this strong move rook h3 and now it's kind of funny but i'm threatening to play g4 and there's no way of stopping it because you cannot move the knight 
This bishop is guarding the whole diagonal, so you can move the king to keep defending the knight. And I started to be very hopeful about this end game. So I'm just gonna show you. So Nazi took, I play g4. So here, here, I took. Oh, yeah, I didn't see the commentary when I was playing, but good to know, Austin. <laughs> I'm happy the commentator thought it's a turnaround. It definitely was for me. Okay, I played here. G5, rook, C3. I now wanted to, you know, get some time. So I gave check here, went back here. And now, what are you gonna do here? Are you gonna go for a draw or are you gonna do something else? And if so, then what? So materially, materialistically, it's four against four. So it's equal, but this rook seems maybe stuck, but also active because it's targeting this, targeting this, and always have the option to go to f2. If there was a pawn or something, then okay, the rook is stuck. But this is more like an active rook. So if you want to play king e7, where do you want to go? Do you want to push f5 or? Because if like if you go to like king d6, like what you're gonna go to e5, then I'm gonna give you a check. You have to go back. Okay, f5 to liberate the rook. Okay, and I guess the idea is that before it's not always immediately possible because sometimes there can be this and. Okay, the rook is still could be defended, but then this pawn hangings as well. Okay, so we had similar idea. So I played king g6. And one of my ideas is to play f5. But second idea is to just go this way. To be just very brutal here and maybe capture this and just promote. That's like the dream. Uh, my opponent went back. I gave another check. And one thing I kind of regret is, it's not giving the check again, because then on move 40, I had a final decision I had to make. I had very little time and I wish I played these, you know, repetitions once more. So I just got 30 seconds, but also I got two extra moves. So that's one thing that, you know, you want to, uh, to think. So rookie three, yes, it's, it's a move. You are keeping the rook on the third rank, but you do want to be careful about some b4 because then there is this and losing the rook. Okay, I continued here. Rook a7. I continued. Before I went here, still the same idea. Rook f5. Okay. What to do now? So we we're having decisions, you know, in the middle games and openings and attacking. Now it's a rook end game. I don't know how many of you are fans of rook end games. I wasn't a big fan in studying rook end games. So I think end games are difficult to understand. Okay. So you may want to think about going here and going back. Yep, other idea is to play either f6 or f4. Yep, you guys got it. So now what to do? Which one of those moves? Okay, okay, most of you want to play, uh, play f5, actually, Kind of all of these moves are good, but you need to have the, the right follow-up. So what I did was the only, I chose, you know, I, my decision making was very interesting because I chose the only line that's not winning. Uh, but obviously it's easy to say now and it's much harder to see it on the board. But my thinking was that I want to give check to the king. So when it moves uh, at some moment, 
and I play f5 or something and then get the king to g2, then I'm capturing on f2 with the check. I hope we are able to keep up because my thinking was very uh, kind of long term. Uh, but that was the idea. So I thought giving the check on f3 and having the king on e2 is helpful because then always recapturing on f2 is with check. There is kind of catch to that check. So all moves f6 and f5 are actually pretty good and supposedly winning. Uh, like for example, if like f5 you go immediately, like takes, takes, let's say you play this, but now, okay, how are you gonna continue? Because you need to be very specific here. There is only one plan that wins. And that's the thing, I didn't see the plan. So what are you gonna do? What do you mean promote? <laughs> It's, it's Black's turn now. So what are you gonna play? Because if you, for example, capture the pawn, I play b6, you go this, I go here. Okay, you're not gonna win, right? So... Yep. Yep. Very good, Kelsey, Roger. Um, it's very strong to go here first check now. And now, uh, like if the king goes to, let's say, e2. Well, actually, some of you got it. Not all of you. If you go king g2 here, I'm still going to play b6. And you're not going to win this because if you take... Um, Yeah, I'm just gonna play. I'm just gonna play King D three, and then I'm threatening to put the rook here. And if you are gonna play Rook B two, then I'm just gonna take. And you're not gonna. Well, takes here, I take here. Right, you, what do you want to do? You want to play g3? Well, if you play g3, I'm just going to defend this pawn as well. Well, if you're going to play g2, I'm going to give check first and then just get closer. Yeah, or maybe I can even, without giving the check. Uh, if I go, you know, funnily enough, I can actually go here. And then if you take, I can take because I'm gonna give you check after you promote, I'm gonna give you check here and I'm gonna get the queen. Okay, so that was a lot of analysis. So I want us to go back and who can find the way to win here. So if you play king take inch two, b6, rook b here, I'm not gonna go and defend, I'm just gonna capture. And then I'm always gonna get the other as well. That's the problem. The pawns are like so next to each other, they can be very easily captured. Wait, so king h2, b6. King g2. Yeah, if I play now b7, you're gonna win. 
I agree, but I'm not going to play b7. I'm going to play rook b5. That's very sneaky because now I'm blocking that and the pawns are running. OK, another try. Oh, well, there's so many lines. <laughs> uh, wait, someone was saying f4. Let's see f4. Uh, so I assume uh, here, here. <coughs> uh, f4, b6. Uh, f4, b6, rook b3, rook takes f5, but I guess rook takes g5, yep. Rook takes g5, f3, king d2. And rook takes b6. Yep. And correct, Austin. That's winning. That's the winning continuation. Okay, hold up. So f4 is the, just for f4 is the winning thing kind of to, to find here. Uh, and I do think I was kind of considering uh, this f4, but somehow I was just, I just uh, was looking, I think also on the king g2 and then I saw this move and I kind of trashed it and I didn't think about playing first rook b3. Uh, but I, I see Madison wants to have suggest something. So king h2, b6, king g2, yeah, but again, I think I'm gonna play here. Just not gonna give that. Okay, so very good job. Very good job of playing f5. So my idea was to play first rook f3, king e2. Uh, now I played f5. So pretty much, you know, very similar idea. Uh, takes, takes. But the problem was that my opponent now tricked me with king f1. And I totally, totally missed that. I just missed king f1. Now the very sneaky part is that white just wants to go and checkmate. Um, and I was, and now I had, I think like one minute or something and I had to decide whether am I scared after king takes here, you know, now I cannot play g3 because there is this checkmate. Um, so if I am winning somehow with like f4 here, rook h3, captures, captures, and b5. And I was like, who is winning there? Anybody wants to give it a try? This is the last position we are about to end. Is that winning or not? Okay, Alex is like, Okay, so if it's not winning, is it a draw or is white winning? Because there is a big, big decision now. Like, what are you gonna do if you are black? You have pretty much two choices. One is to, I mean, take and go for it. Or second choice is uh, to just like, you know, kind of chicken out and play rook b3 and capture this and, you know, be happy for a draw. Okay, so a lot of saying white is winning, some Alex saying it's a draw. So tell me, okay, I want you to make one last decision. You are black, you have 30 seconds. What are you gonna do? Are you gonna play King H2? Maybe it's draw, maybe you're gonna play for a win, maybe it's lost, depending how good is your calculation, or are you gonna play Rook B3? Just safely, you know, make a draw and be happy. Okay, so I have two, vo two votes for rook b3. 
Depends on the rating. All right, so we are playing Nazi by Kidze. She's like 2380. But how does that depend on the rating? <laughs> okay, if like you play, I guess, very weak opponent, you may hope to, okay, we do have some votes for King Take H2. All right, so second, second kind of, <laughs> second option to kind of finish the class by taking the mic. Anyone wants to get the mic and say, you know, what you would play. And especially if you want to play King Take H2 to tell us the whole variation, how it's, you know, Winning, losing, making the draw. So if you do exclaim or just raise your hand, I'm going to give you the mic. Exactly. You never know. Even if you play 1900, they can be pretty strong. <laughs> if you are playing Kostya, you're going to go with rook b3. <laughs> yeah, especially when he does like chessable stuff about rook and games. Okay, Austin, sure. What are you gonna play, Austin? The uh, king takes h2, and then my line was something like uh, b5. Okay, or... okay, Austin, one thing. King take h2, you think it's a draw? You think you're winning? What? What is that? What is it? I think it's a queen end game, but I think it's a win. Okay, awesome. So tell us. So, rook take, so king take h2. And the line was like rook a8, right? Mm hmm. Uh, F4, rook h8, rook h3, rook takes, uh, g takes h3, b5, g4, b6, g3. Wait, wait, slowly. b6, uh, g3. b7, but we get g2 with check. Mm -hmm. And then, I don't know where his king is going, probably e2. Mm -hmm. Okay, we queen... And then he queens. And then I think we have our pawn on f4, so it's blocking it. And then I think after something like, I think queen g4 first. Um, but I think basically because we have that huge mass of pawns over there, mm -hmm. uh, black is probably winning the queen endgame. So like king e1, king g2. Okay, so let's go ahead now. There are so many arrows. Uh, so let's just look at that. Uh... So king take h2, we were saying that, yeah, okay. you're, yep, uh, now you go f4 first. f4 first, you go here, you go there, takes, takes, here, 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 yeah, here, here, check, there, promote, queen, promotes yeah i was saying like yeah queen g4 here yeah and okay here i mean we can conclude that black is pretty much winning because after like uh, something like f3 there's always like queen g2 getting the pawn right right and if you don't do that then okay something like this promote like yeah and you cannot go even king f1 because there is checkmate okay so this is winning but let's uh by the way thank you so much uh austin for sharing this line now do you think white has improvement anywhere okay i see some people raising hands so i'm just gonna uh give space now to to someone else but thank you so much austin let's go with separate i hope the pronunciation is right uh, what do you think okay. hey Hi, uh, I think F3 is good for white. Where? Oh, right now? Yeah, yeah. So instead of, wait, what was the last one? Yeah. So after captures. Now F3. Now F3. So pretty much now you are very sneaky with stopping my G4 and then you want to run. Oh, uh, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And what's your, what's your evaluation here? What, what do you think? What do you think? You know, white is supposed to play. Here? Black is supposed to play here. And the critical line would be g four, g four, mm -hmm. and probably f takes g four. Mm -hmm. King g three. Mm -hmm. Uh, then king g one. Mm -hmm. And then b five. Wait, king g one. Now it's black's turn. Oh, F3. 
three. Mm -hmm. G five, G five this time actually. Oh, G five. Okay. Five would probably be better. And mm -hmm. F two check. Actually, black is too fast. Black seems to be fast, right? Here, yeah, here. Is, yeah, black is faster. Okay, so wait. So yeah, where else can black we? Is here. So black is winning. Probably, yeah. Okay, so we think black is winning, but black is not winning. So who can find anybody else wants to? Uh, by the way, thank you for for the suggestions and the calculation. Uh, I know it's like super hard to be calculating these lines, and obviously, especially if you have like little time. But how is white? How is black gonna? I mean, how is white gonna defend? Anybody else wants to, you know, get the mic, give it a try? William, wait, maybe this is all. Hmm. Wait, which line I wanted to? Okay, okay. Austin, you wanna? I think we are. Wait, we are missing something somewhere. So who wanna? <laughs> There's so many lines in the chat. I'm like losing track of it. So uh, let's go back to this line. So we have uh, once again King take H2. That's the important line we have to consider. Rook a8. Now uh, we can play rook h3 to stop it, but then this pawn is running really fast, and uh, yeah, that's that's not that's just not gonna help us win, win the position. So we need to pretend like we want to, you know, run really fast as well, and that's why we played f4. And after f4, uh, why it goes rook h1 to go for kind of the check. Rook h3, takes, takes. And now what? Okay, if you, if you wanna, okay, I have more people raising hand. Okay, let's go with Madison. Madison, what do you think? Um, I thought maybe uh, white could maybe go, um... Mm -hmm. If they went uh, queen, uh, yeah, uh, if it, uh, they went b5, I think they might be able okay. to. Thanks. Then I push. b6. Mm -hmm. So where are you changing the line compared to the um, previously we talked about? Uh, fx, g3. Okay, so we were looking at b7 before, but you want to x on g3, takes. Mm -hmm. uh, b, b, b7. Mm -hmm. uh, then you need to go g2, check. Yep. Uh, king e2. Mm -hmm. Then you'd go g1, uh, promotion to a queen. Mm -hmm. Then I'd go b8, check. Mm -hmm. Queen. Then if you... If I play, say here, queen g3. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's winning for black. It looks like it's winning, but uh, actually, I mean, this is again, like theoretical thing, like white needs to know how to defend, uh, but Madison, very I, good job. Yeah. I think maybe uh, queen xg3. If you x, then... I'm just yeah oh uh, yeah okay yeah but the thing is like uh like the problem is that there's this move like queen f8 yep exactly separate than other people are suggesting it um and it's like very hard for you to get the king out and if you try to get like you, you can get checkmated as well yeah and, yeah and if you after queen f8 like move the king somewhere like you know i don't know there 
then I can always like give check and just move back with the queen. I think, yeah, queen f1. I, I think maybe queen f1, king h2. Uh, yeah, I think. Yeah. Oh, actually, you're right. We can do queen f2 and just like. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, very good job, Marissa. Yeah, exactly. So this was the line that. Uh, I think it's the biggest chance for black to try to play for a win because obviously white still needs to defend this position. And I understand some people may claim like, okay, it's theoretical draw, whatever you go queen F1. Uh, okay, you know, 30 seconds when you play a game and you have only 30 seconds, anything can happen. And there is an extra pawn for black. But for me, I, I can tell you that when I was calculating the whole line, now obviously again, it was from this position. So it's like really far away. I got scared after the game, after the move, um, this. I was worried that after move F3 here, somehow I thought that maybe I'm not, I'm losing this or just like, it's bad for me because I'm stopping this. This king is not allowing, like, you know, when you move, I move under this and this pawn is running. But obviously we kind of figured it's, it's not right because black is just really fast here, but I didn't see it. So that's why in the game, I just decided to kind of chicken out and just to play queen b3. I mean, rook b3 here, I took, took, and we made draw by repetition. So I thought it was a really interesting game, you know, given that if I move it all the way back for a second to, to this position that seemed like very uncomfortable, uncomfortable for me uh, to create like a, Eight six some some counter attack again trying to to be active. You, we saw it in the game that remember I played with the like bishop a three bishop b four and a five. Just even if we are black and st struggling a little bit, still trying for some active uh, continuations and then getting the the rook end game where we can try to play for a win. Uh, but then just precision is very needed and calculation is needed and you see how complicated it can get. So. Those are my few games that I wanted to share with you from the uh, US championships. And oh, yeah, I know I'm kind of taking longer. <laughs> Sorry, if you need to go, feel free to go. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for participating, for you know, grabbing the mic when you had opportunity, uh, because, because it's, it's good to, you know, to when you practice, to make like decisions, to uh, to really not just calculate and just like passively consume the content, but to really commit to something and then uh, see, you know, whether it's right or whether it's wrong. But just making and seriously considering lines, it's still helping you really with your uh, with your progress. Yeah, and there is no embarrassment. Like you see, I, I messed up so many times in the game. So if you mess up in your variation or you don't see everything, that's totally fine. We are all just humans. So, so yep, I have some, okay, I will open chat. I will totally open chat so everybody can, you know, get crazy. Uh, but if you have any questions, let me know. But I think this is all from me. I cannot, you know, when you like chess, you can do it for like many, many hours. But I know you have also other stuff to do. So uh, thank you so much for being here. And I think that's that's all from me.